everybody, Stu, AG6AG. Today, we're going to take a look at operating remotely and more specifically, how to get your Go Kit together to do that. Um, and actually, operating remotely isn't just a Go Kit. It's a bunch of different modules that you put together for that remote operation. We're going to talk about that, and this became such a big subject that we're going to break it up into four videos. So this is the first of four. We're actually going to be talking about the radios and the equipment that you may want to build into your radio deployment kit uh, to suit your needs. But most of all, we talk about thinking about those needs and the things that you have to take into consideration based on the kind of operating that you're doing. So with that, oh, hey, if you think of it and you like my videos, do me a favor, click the subscribe button and you can click on the bell and get notified whenever I come out with new videos. Also, any questions, comments, make them down below for me, will you? With that, let's get this show on the road. All right, well, I'm Stu, AG6AG, and without any further ado, let's get started on this four-video project. First off, um, there I sat on field day, right before it, saying, okay, I got my go kit. Well, and then I thought, uh, you know, yeah, I do. I have my go kit, but you know what? I need a power supply. I got to power it somehow. Nobody's going to provide that for me. So I grabbed my box with my power supply and short extension. And I said, well, actually, I don't know where I'm going to be getting power. I probably need some more extension cords. Oh, wait a minute. I've got to provide power. And I've got to provide it through either a generator or a battery. Well, thank goodness I can provide it through a generator. That's much easier. So the generator gets in the list. And then all of a sudden, you know, I begin to realize that, you know, I need all sorts of other stuff, chairs, carpet, uh, all sorts of things, tape, coax. Um, wow. I need a bigger car. Well, that isn't necessarily true. Uh, but the truth was, I didn't need a bigger car because I owned a trailer. <laughs> anyway, look, the point I'm trying to make here for what it's worth is that when you're getting ready to do an event, I see a lot of guys that put go kits together and they try to build everything into some sort of case or something uh, in order to be able to grab it in one fell swoop and take everything. Um, my first efforts were kind of like that. I built power supplies in, uh, but I've even seen guys build in batteries and other stuff, uh, which, you know, in my mind, I'm probably better off, you know, kind of spreading this over several different modules. And let's talk a little bit about that. But before we go into that, let's talk about, all right, what are the things that I really need to worry about for when I operate remotely? Big one for me is weight. How much weight is each individual thing going to weigh? Now, everybody says, well, I have a dolly or I have a platform or I have this. I'm not that concerned about weight. But you still got to load it in and out of the vehicle. And I've operated at events where uh, basically you wouldn't get a dolly in there if you tried. Uh, and your car wouldn't get in there either. So I've had to carry stuff 50, 60 feet to get to an operating station one thing at a time. Uh, so I try to put a limitation on weight of about 40 to 50 pounds per package, okay? Uh, I figure if I can lift 40 pounds, I should be able to carry it 100 feet. And if I can't, well, maybe I got to stop eating so much and work out a little bit more, right? But uh, much more than that, I, you know... The, the idea here is to have fun, not kill yourself, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, if it weighs more than that, I certainly try to get some help. As a matter of fact, I try to, if it's a Boy Scout event, I try to find some young, strong Boy Scouts to carry the stuff in and out for me. But that's a that's a whole other subject. Also, when I'm putting the my concepts together, you know, I had to think about use. What am I going to be using 
uh, the radio for? What am I, yeah, because there's all sorts of things that we do, right? Uh, sometimes we'll go out and we need radios to uh, do public service events where we're actually operating as a rest stop or uh, a watering station for a walk or a bike rider, or we may be operating net control with our equipment. So the radio needs for that are much different than when you go out to a event and are showcasing amateur radio for people and you want them to be able to participate and you know get a look and a feel for what amateur radio is so two distinctly different things so what i found is i needed to come up with modular go kits where i had a go kit specifically designed for uh, you know, events and things where it's just basically raw work. I'm not really showcasing anything. I need to operate. I don't need any fluff or any additional stuff. And then on the other side, when I'm out, I might be doing contests uh, out in the field uh, at public places where people are kind of come and ask questions. I need something that is easy for me to use, but also I need something that is very presentable to the public. So I've taken all that into consideration as well when I put together the uh, go kits. Now, of course, I'm talking two or three different go kits here. I have to start thinking about budget too. Uh, how often am I going to use this stuff? Is it worthwhile for me to build some stuff into specific kits? Um, a great example of that is when we get into other videos coming up in this series, we're going to be talking about powering the radio as a distinct modular thing. Uh, antennas, coax for the radio as a distinct uh, exclusive thing to itself. Uh, as well as the rest of the interfaces with the radio, computer controls, all those other things as a separate thing that we need to take into consideration uh, and how we can make those modular as well. But all this, of course, costs money. So take into consideration your budget when you start planning this. And, of course, transportation. How do I get this stuff where it needs to go? That's a big question, right? Uh, I own a Subaru Forester. If I put all the seats down and take everything out of it, I can load up pretty well, but I found it was better for me just to find an inexpensive used trailer that I could load up and drive out to those sites. And, uh, you know, it's much easier to walk in and out of a trailer carrying something than it is trying to shove something in a really, uh, in an SUV or something like that where you're stretching. Um, and, you know, I have a bad back, so that's an important consideration for me. If you're a youngster and can get out there and, you know, darn the to uh, torpedoes full speed ahead, I'll get that in there out of my way. All right, you know, all you got to worry about is making sure you have enough room in whatever you're driving. Uh, for me, there's the whole load in, load out factor and stuff like that. So that became something that became something that I had to consider. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we have uh, categories, right? And these are the categories that we're going to start discussing as we do this. Uh, of course, we've got the go kit, which would be the radio and the supporting devices with the radio. My concept of the go kit uh, as a traditional go kit is something that houses everything that it needs to house with easy access to the connections for the other modules. Other modules such as, of course, electricity. How are we going to power it? There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, you know, of course, if AC is available where we're going, being able to run along extension cord into a uh, uh, power supply and plug that directly into the go kit, that's a big win. You're not carrying much then. But what if that's not available? Well, can you run a generator, right? Those are some of the questions that you ask. Uh, if not, all right, do I have to operate off battery power? How long do I have to operate off battery power? And of course, hey, can I charge it with solar, right? Now we have a whole different setup for solar. So you kind of see how modularizing this makes it a little bit easier for your loadout. Um, of course, antenna systems, right? 
there's a big difference between going out for a VHF, UHF uh, uh, public, uh, public event or possibly uh, uh, a uh, uh, public service event, right, uh, then there is going out to do HF and having to deploy, you know, possibly really large antennas, okay? Uh, I consider antenna systems a completely different module in this whole group, and we'll talk about those also in this series. Uh, and, uh, you know, of course, computer controls, right? If you're doing digital or anything like that, which is a very common thing now, you have to be able to interface with a computer, with cat controls, audio systems, all sorts of stuff like that. And all that stuff, in my opinion, is modular. Uh, how I connect into a computer to do the things I want to do is very, very modular. Some things I may choose to build into a go kit, such as a... Uh, uh, SDR uh, adapter or something like that so I can just plug uh, a USB port into the go kit to be able to display waterfalls and things like that. Um, in some cases though it makes more sense to have that as something external. So these are all things that you need to take into consideration, right? For today we're going to talk about go kits, okay? And I think the best place to start is with QRP. Now, this little radio here, believe it or not, is about the size of a big heavy HT, something you would have had probably in the 80s, maybe the 70s, okay? This is a, this is a pretty big component. This is a kit. It's the TJ2B, uh, and uh, this particular kit is designed to operate uh, in uh, uh, QRP mode, you can take this up to a hilltop and it'll run for a while on the built-in battery. Now, of course, you still got to pack in antennas and things like that. But, you know, you hook a random long wire to this up on top of a mountaintop. You've got, I believe, uh, 10, 15, 20, and I think it has 40, but I'd have to look it up again. Uh, you can operate HF fairly simply, and I believe that it actually has a, a little thing to plug in a key as well, so you could do CW. Definitely low power, okay? I don't do a lot of this, but I wanted to include this as one of the radios. This is all self-contained. Uh, I have no idea on the price, but uh, there's lots of other radios out there that'll do it. Uh, a great example of that is, uh, I believe it's the uh, FT817, uh, I think the new one is the 818, which is a QRP radio also that resembles uh, the uh, 857. Uh, anyway, uh, very nice radio. I know a lot of hilltoppers that use that radio. You know, I know a lot of hilltoppers that go out there with Baofeng. So, again, you know, it's all in what you're after. This is not my particular niche when I operate remotely. Uh, but we'll we'll go into that a little bit as we uh, as we move kind of forward here. These are three of my go kits right here. Uh, they're use specific. Um, I have one that's really for HF, U, uh, UHF, VHF, but it's more for uh, events where either we're doing contesting in the public or uh, field day is a great example when I'm going to be operating a long time and it really comes down to being able to make multiple contacts. Uh, the other kit uh, to the right of it is uh, basically more of a uh, public service event kind of kit. It supports uh, HF, VHF, UHF, and it will handle uh, uh, two uh, completely uh, separate VHF, UHF radios, right? So if I'm doing an event and I need to run more than one VHF, UHF frequency, this has two distinct antennas and two distinct hookups that I can set up two completely separate radios to operate for that event. Uh, built into it. And of course, if I need a third one, you kind of look over on the top of the one on the left there, what you're going to see is you're going to see a, uh, oh my goodness, uh, that is a VHF radio designed strictly for digital, but you can unplug the digital stuff and actually use it as a VHF uh, uh, phone radio, and it does operate up to 75 watts. So let's 
Let's talk a little bit more about these because these had specific purposes and they're purpose built. Um, by the way, neither none of these weigh over 45 pounds. Okay, that was one of my goals. Remember, is weight. Sure, I could have thrown some more stuff in, and you know, I might have been able to leave some stuff out, but there's just certain things that I felt that you have to have. And the less connections that I'm making in series outside of these boxes, in my opinion, the better off I am. Uh, let's go ahead and start off with the little digital unit here. Uh, and we'll, uh, uh, this is designed, actually, I originally built this because I was doing digital training or starting to do digital training for uh, uh, Packet and FL Digi for our local uh, uh, emergency services group here. Uh, our AC, what we, uh, our races out here is called ACS, but uh, basically for, um, you know, um, public service, we utilize digital quite a bit. So this was a real advantage to be able to get this set up uh, for training because we could actually emulate this and we could bring people in with their laptops and show them how it actually works on their own devices, which was kind of cool. Um, and of course, there's not a lot to this. Basically, what I have here is I have a FT2900. Uh, it's an older VHF-only radio. This is the radio a lot of the guys that go out in four-wheel drive use, uh, the four-wheel drivers that actually have ham radio licenses. 75-watt um, radio does really well. Um, and uh, basically, the only other component here is a signal link. Uh, and uh, what you can't see behind her is I actually have a built-in fuse uh, panel and everything else. So this basically can plug into any 12-volt source, whether it's coming off AC into a power supply uh, or coming off a battery. It doesn't really matter. And, uh, of course, just plug an antenna into it. Uh, and uh, from an expense standpoint, everything's mounted on a piece of wood. Uh, it does go into like a uh, um, hard uh, suitcase right but um, hey I picked one of those up at Harbor Freight and I was happy with it now as we go a little bit farther down the rabbit hole this is my um, public service event and this by the way I call it my public service event go kit but it will also do contests and all sorts of other things so uh, it is really the reason I call it a public event kit is it has multiple radios in it. So, you know, in an emergency or something like that, we can use it uh, for both H for HF, VHF, and UHF without any kind of problem. And we could use both the radios support VHF, UHF, so we can actually use those bands as well simultaneously from the same kit. Uh, go over this really quick. Let's talk about what we actually have in it. Uh, FT-857, which is a mobile all-band radio, uh, goes 2 meters 440 and then 6 all the way up to 160. Um, next to it is we, we have the uh, HF tuner, uh, because let's face it, you know, we're when we start getting into the antenna stuff, we're going to talk about how difficult it is with uh, setting up out in different environments to really try to get that SWR perfect. And having a tuner in your go kit, as far as I'm concerned, is one of the most important things in this go kit to keep from burning your radio up. Because if you're out in the middle of nowhere and you burn it up, guess what? You don't have another radio. Um, that said... Uh, you know, it's up to you as to whether you want to add something like that. I, uh, I even take it a step farther. If you look down at the bottom shelf in the middle there, what you're going to see is you're going to see uh, two uh, watt power meters uh, that uh, basically will show SWR as well. So I have a second eye on the stuff that's uh, going on. Uh, now on the far left on the bottom of the shelf, guess what? I got a signal link. Why do I have that? Because I want the ability to be able to do digital. And this also allows me to do digital on HF. It allows me to do digital on VHF, UHF. I can do digital uh, packet. I can do, um, uh, boy, um, PSK31. Uh, I can do VARA, okay, for uh, Winlink. I can do Winlink directly from this. 
okay and you can't see on the back of the panel we have a panel that has all the connectors on it and uh, I may go into that a little bit more in some of the other modules so you can see what we actually do when we hook those other modules up uh, and uh, down on the bottom right I have an FT8900 now this is a quad band radio this does 2 meters 440 6 meters and 10 meters uh, FM only excellent radio uh, was my mobile radio for years until I got another uh, mobile just uh, because I needed some additional APERS functions built in. And it just was getting too difficult uh, when I was running SAG for events to use this with APERS. So, uh, love this kit. Very easy to put together. Uh, some other things you can't see really quick. Of course, we've got a uh, uh, fused power distribution unit in the back. Uh, we also have a... Uh, Oh, uh, excuse me while I think for a minute. We also have a switching unit so we can uh, have a output for monitor only that uh, when transmit, it basically uh, grounds out that uh, antenna output. We use that for external SDR use if we want to hook a SDR up uh, on this unit uh, at a later time. Uh, also, uh, you know, there are... Uh, some of the other things that uh, are in here is uh, some out, uh, outbound power distribution as well, the ability to hook the computer in directly on a panel on the back. So uh, there was a lot of thought that goes into this, and we'll probably cover all that kind of stuff with these go kits um, as we get into the other modules, okay? Um, and, of course, this is my event go kit my public event where people are going to come and look at what i'm doing go kit this is the go kit that i used this last field day um, and uh, it has only a single radio in it that is an all band uh, let's talk about what the components of this actually are so it looks pretty much the same right but not really. Of course, we've got the uh, HF SWR power meters, BHF and HF on either side. Um, I have the uh, tuner up in the far left corner. Like I said, not having a tuner on an HF rig that you're using out in the field, in my opinion, is a mistake. Even if a tuner is built into the radio, because the built-in tuner is only going to handle about two to two and a half to one. Uh, and I have to tell you, running a long wire or something like that out in the middle of nowhere, you can end up with pretty wacky impedances that you're going to have to work out with the tuner in order to not have the uh, power pulled back because of high SWR. So that's just my attitude. Something really interesting about this unit is that audio amp that I have up in the center top. And that is designed to allow multiple headsets to be connected with individual volume controls. Example of using that is if you are having someone that's logging for you out in the field. So they can hear everything you can hear. Uh, also, uh, if you have people that are coming in that are interested in it and you're in a kind of a quiet environment, uh, let's say you're operating indoors at an expo or something like that, you can hand them an uh, inexpensive pair of headphones, have them put them on, set the volume for them, and they can actually listen to what's actually going on through the headset, um, which is a neat feature, okay? Um, and also, of course, we have a speaker that's mounted in the back that you can't see that is the monitor speaker. So when we are working outside and we're not going to interfere with other people with loud audio, we can turn the volume up and everybody can hear what we're doing, including us. Um, one other interesting thing, up in the top right, I have some USB ports. This unit actually has a uh, powered USB 3 hub built into it, which feeds to the radio for cat control, as well as the built-in audio systems for digital in the radio. Uh, it also feeds to a uh, built-in SDR uh, which allows us actually just to output, just plug the laptop in and bada bing, bada boom, we've got a full waterfall display. If you don't know about how to set that up, 
I suggest you check out one of my other videos that has to do with setting up the RTL SDR. Uh, and we also talk about antenna switching, all sorts of other things involved in that. There's a whole series on uh, RTL STR you probably want to take a look at if you're interested in doing that. Let's see. And I also have a, a little switch up there that turns lights on to the uh, uh, watt uh, amp. Uh, excuse me, watt uh, S, uh, SWR meters. Uh, so if I'm working outside at night uh, and I want to see what status is, I can just turn them on and look at them. And also an input voltage. So if I'm having an issue with a battery or I'm trying to transmit and I see the voltage is going too far down, I can basically swap the battery out or come up with another power solution. It gives it to me right there when I'm operating. Um, and this I actually built this year specifically for field day to put it together. A, a very brief test in my office to make sure that there wasn't anything crazy wrong. And out to field day we went. Very successful operating 20 meters on this. Uh, we operated off a very large tower with a Yagi for N6R, which is uh, our field day event at the Ronald Reagan Library. It was our 20th year this year. I got to throw that plug in because uh, it's amazing. Uh, N6R, if you had a CUSO with us this field day, uh, get your information uh, in to us for a uh, nice QSL card uh, that references the Ronald Reagan Library. All right. Um, and you know, with that, uh, that's really about all I have on go kits. But again, the whole thought process on these go kits for me to put them together had to do with a lot of different things. I mean, your mileage is going to vary on what you want to do with it. I've seen a lot of go kits that weigh 115, 120 pounds, okay, because guys load them up. Uh, and, you know, maybe they never go out to places like Boy Scout camps or whatever where you may have to, uh, you know, they put you in a position where you have to unload things and kind of, I'm not going to say pack them in, but get them carried in maybe a um, quarter, half of a football field. Um, and believe me, uh, you know, you got a lot of stuff that you're going to be bringing. You, you really, really do. Um, you know, so you got to kind of take weight in consideration. Also, again, think about what you're going to be using this equipment for. We're going to go deeper into, you know, when you're deploying in the next three videos. But hey, for now, I think I've covered most of what you need to know about putting the components and figuring out the components that you need for your individual go kit. With that, I'm Stu AG6AG. Well, with the length of that, well, I think you understand now why we wanted to make multiple videos. There's a lot of info to cover in this, and I hope I covered the info that you wanted to see. Three more videos after this, so keep an eye out for them. The easiest way to do that, by the way, is to go ahead and subscribe and then click on the bell for notifications. Um, as always, questions, anything down in the comment section, if you would. Uh, and I try to answer all the questions I get within a couple of days, okay? So uh, they will get answered if you make them down in comments. With that, this is Stu, AG6AG, seeing 73. And, oh, man, I hope I talked to you on the air.